it's, it's week 10 of the golfing calendar. And now, live from the Australian Golf Centre, home of the PGA of Australia and Golf Australia, a couple of tour pros talking about the week in golf. One of them has just finished a juice cleanse. The other, he's never had a strawberry or a banana in his life. True story. Nick O'Hearn and Mark Allen, with Australia's number one golf podcast, this is Talk Birdie to Me. I was across the road today. Oh, you were? Yeah, I played Royal Melbourne. Oh, yeah. fantastic. In the Lexus, uh, Black, the Lexus of Blackburn Golf Day. It was good, actually. Ricky Ponting was there. He's a good, he's a good fellow. Hits the ball well, Ricky oh, he's Ponting. He's a good player. Yeah. yeah. Member up at Cathedral, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was interesting. I'm a lover of Royal Melbourne. Yes. You are too? Oh, I just... Well, I'm on the list. I finally got on the list there. You're on the list I'm at on Royal list. Melbourne? Yeah, yeah. So how long before you become a member Ooh, of Royal Melbourne? Uh, probably seven or eight years something like that. It's worth so, the wait. But when I when I first got back from overseas, I, I wanted to join, but they had this rule there where pros couldn't join. Yeah, I've heard about uh, that. Yeah. A bit of an archaic rule, and uh, but that got overturned in one of their you know, board meetings or Fantastic. whatever, and, which is great, I think. And now, um, yeah, I got on the list, so I'm, you know, well, I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> can I tell you this? I got a special tour, and, and by the way, we, hello and welcome to the program. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. I got a tour through their new car park today. Yeah, okay. So the car park is extraordinary. So once upon a time before they did it's like a $10, $15 million job just to create an underground car park, they had 180 car parks. Now they're going to have 280 was the word that they were telling me. But there's going to be a putting green sitting on top of of this underground car park. Their driving range has been extended around 20 metres, which is a lot. I mean, they've got huge fences at the end anyway, but the 20 metres is is very, very helpful. They're going to have the, you know, the, the Astro Turf strip at the back. Perfect. But then he took me down. So there's a teaching area, you know, a, a structure, up, the big house. The right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a stairwell just there. So he takes me down there and we go in there. It looks... You know, it just looks like so much bigger than the Nationals. And then he walks me through and then there's a space for 300 electric carts. 300? 300. Gosh. So, you know, the remote control carts, electric buggies, oh, yeah, golf yeah. carts, okay. the whole yep. lot. So when you park your car, you come in, you go on the underground, a hot day, beautiful, car doesn't get hot when you go home. You park your car, you walk back towards the pro shop, but you're on the ground, you go and pick up your cart – or your clubs or whatever, mm-hmm. then you go up this beautiful little rise. Wow. There's going to be history on either side oh, of the walls. The walk of and, fame. And when you pop up, you're right there in front of the pro shop. Oh. I mean, you don't, want to, <laughs> you don't want to say Magic. it's $10 million or $15 million <laughs> well spent because it's a lot for a car park. Yeah. But <laughs> I guess a baggage storage as well by the It's sounds. the best car park in Australia. That's incredible. By a mile. And then when you get in the pro shop... you get to go play the best golf course as well. Well, I'm glad... (laughs) It depends on who you talk to. I'm glad you said that. (laughs) Can we... Why why do some people... I guess I kind of know why. A lot of people play Royal Melbourne for the very first time and go, yeah, it's not that good. Mm. You and I both love it. To Mm. me, the composite course in particular... Yeah, hands down, that is... The best golf course in Australia by by a million miles. Even so, seven the West course... The West is incredible. Mm. ...is always the one that they rank, and it's number eight in the world or number seven in the world. Something like that, Something like Mm. that. It always is. It's always in the top ten. But if they ever bothered to one day rank the composite course, which I think they should do, I reckon every venue around the world, you get one course to rank... Mm-hmm. Because at the moment they rank the east and the west, and, you know, and you go other other places. You know, the national they got three courses. Yep, yep. I don't know about that. I reckon, I reckon you should get one. And if okay. Royal Melbourne bothered, if that was the rule, everywhere did their own composite. That'd be fascinating. If, if every, everyone said, "Just show us your best course," and that is the course that we are ranking, that's it. Right. If Royal Melbourne did that, and they got to get their composite course ranked, it's number three in the world. Okay. Pine Valley, Behind. which I've never been to. Yep. Cyprus, which I have, oh, which is unbelievable. Is incredible. And Royal Melbourne, yep. for me, fits in nice and snug right behind Cyprus. I like it. I like it. Yeah, the fascinating thing about Royal Melbourne for me is, as a pro, when you play it, it's quite easy to shoot par, yep. you know, one or two under par, but yep. it's very tough to shoot four, five, six under because then you 
all of a sudden you have to take these risks which tempt you into doing things you don't want to do. And that's the sign of great architecture and a great golf course. And uh, I know they had some issues with conditioning through the year, the past yeah. year or so, but yeah. I hear it's coming back and it's really starting to play well. It was magnificent today. Okay. So, How kicks, were the greens? Were they fast and magnificent, firm? Magnificent. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. Beautiful. They, I've never seen the greens better set up for your normal player. Mm. For a tournament, they'd probably just – It'd be one foot faster on the stint meter. Mm-hmm. That'd be it. But today, they were still really firm. I mean, if you hit a six iron in the green, you had to land it on the front edge to get it to stop at the back. Um, that's for me <laughs> these days. You know, the big yeah. boys that hit a six iron, they'd manage to wow. make it stop somehow. Yeah. Um, the fairways were back, but Kingston, Ethan, Royal Melbourne, they have swap days. So we had a swap day. I didn't play, but the reports back a month ago was, what the hell is wrong with Royal Melbourne? Really? Okay. I, I haven't played to, there in quite a while. I went there today and it was sensational. I spoke with Richard Forsyth, who is the superintendent there, yep. and I asked him about the new practice fairway that sits on top of an underground car park. Mm-hmm. And I said, how much you know sand and stuff did you have to put on top of the – he goes, not much, about a metre. <laughs> so there's sand, then gravel, and then it's, you know, the, the car park is angled, so it drains. Wow. They've thought of everything. And then a putting green, not a fake, a, a fair income Royal Melbourne style putting green will be right outside the front door of the pro shop. Pro shop, right. Love it. And, and you walk, there's two paths going either side of it on the way to the brand new, the brand new range. Yeah. I can't um, wait. And then over the other side, you've got those new tennis courts as the well. The new tennis courts, so, I was just about to say. Yeah, my mate Todd Woodbridge helped him with that, you know, how to maybe make it look a bit Wimbledon-ish, you know, with the wooden posts and all that and the hedges around and it just, it's going to be fantastic. Where we had lunch, Nick, we could look out onto the tennis courts and we we're all wanting to go out there and just <laughs> check them out. They looked so good. Yeah, they come so along. Todd's done an unbelievable job. Well, yeah, I'm not sure how involved he was, but he um, he had some say in you know how to do it and all that. And uh, I'm going to have a hit there with him soon, hopefully. Who knows? So. Last one on the composite course. Okay. Mm-hmm. Last, the last one. We've got to yep. move on. We've got a stack to talk about. Um, the way they route it these days, so it's three west is the first. When we – in my – in, in my day mm-hmm. playing, the first West was the first. You had this beautiful little warm handshake, they say. You know, you walk on the first. I never played it that way. Well, that, that is the way to play it, Nick. Okay. So, so you get you get, you get get the nice warm handshake on the first. You know, it's an easy drive. Yeah. Difficult second. If mm-hmm. you don't hit it a million miles down there, then you've got the second hole, which is a par five. And, then, you know, these days it's a three wood and probably a four iron for the big guys, mm-hmm. three wood, six iron, and you're away. And then you get to the third hole, which is yeah. the first of the East. It was the great way to play it. I don't know why they don't play it that way all the time. Mm. It's just a better way. It was a better start and you got all the really tough holes. You had an opportunity to start well. And then by the time you got to seven uh, is seven and then ten west is eight on the composite. So eight's your last gimme. And then you had nine west, eleven west into twelve west, which is a par four. Four. Par, well, it depends how they play it. I think they play it as a par, a par four for the. It's a par five normally, but normally, a par four. Yeah, yeah. And then you got uh, seventeen yeah. and eighteen on the west course, which was a really, really hard stretch, and it, it mm. just came at the right time. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, but I only ever played it from the early two thousands or mid when I played the Heineken there yeah. and some other events. What was the first? It was three west. So yeah. you went three west, four, five, six. Yeah. I mean that great stretch. Yeah. Seven too early. Seven up the hill. Um, you miss out on that beautiful four. warm handshake on uh, the first. <laughs> <laughs> I think it went that way. Actually, I'm trying to remember because they've, they've changed it, you know, continually. A so, times. but at the end of the day, 18 sub finishes up 18 east in front of the clubhouse, and it's one of the great finishing holes in tournament golf. I've got a theory. Now, this is really is the last one on Melbourne. Right? Okay, I've go got on. a theory. I've got a theory. You know how the greens are yep. like this. Mm-hmm. This table. They are. They are. So, they're the hardest greens in the whole world. I reckon they've been that way ever since Ernie Els shot the 60. Because <laughs> one of the 60s, there's there's three. One of the 60s shot in Australian golf is at Royal Melbourne, composite, and it was Ernie Els and it was done when the greens were really soft. And the actual was that, that same week. I didn't week, play that year, I know that. The, the same <laughs> week, I played that year, came 20th. The guy from New Zealand, Richard Lee, Shot sixty one. Oh, so wow. on the on the okay. on the leaderboards it was R. Lee. Okay. So everyone used to laugh when Richard Lee was playing well. R. Lee, he shot sixty one. And I think Ernie Els came out later in the week and shot the sixty. Wow. And I think that they were never going to let that happen no. ever 
ever again. And from that point forward, so my, the grades so, at Royal Melbourne So a couple were of like years that. later when he shot that, a couple, so you're saying, because I shot 63 when I played with Did Ernie. Did you? And third round at the Heineken, I played with Ernie, shot 63, one of my best rounds ever. And the Greens were rock hard. And that was when Jared Lyle was in contention. I remember that. And, yeah, I played that 18th hole East four times uh, yeah. in the playoff with uh, Craig Parry and, uh, yeah, he got me. <laughs> well, if you shot 63... That's equivalent the, to his 60, I reckon. That's better. <laughs> that's, mud, that, that's better because the year he yeah. shot 60, the Greens were like mud. Oh, there you go. And I've never seen And the ball stopped dead. Yeah, okay. So your 63 no, is much better. Much better, yeah. That's what I said too. <laughs> 63, I still can't get over that. That's unbelievable. Yeah, so I was very happy. By the way, yeah. so you were out there today, um, any pros out there or anyone that you saw? That yeah, Wayne York? Smith was there. Oh, really? Smithy? Yeah. Oh, so he was a member at my home club in Perth, Mount Lawley. Uh, from way back, I've known Smithy for ages. Great He's one bloke. of the greatest blokes of all time. Can I uh, can I tell a really quick story? Yeah, yeah. Well, he, why not? Did, he did this for me. He did something for me in my career uh, that I'll never forget. We were playing at Concord. It was the Tour Championship. It's the third round, and I've three putted two holes on the back nine, and I'm on the I'm on the brink of losing my card. I was top sixty, and I was about eightieth. Okay, eightieth. So I'm gone. You know, I was head down. Worst day of my life. My career's over. I'm done. Went home. Had a steak, got in the courtesy car the next day. It was a fluke. You know, you always have to share a courtesy car. Yeah. I got the courtesy car to myself. And on the way to Concord from the city, I was thinking, it's not so bad. You know, you've had a good run. Everything's great. You know, think of all the things I've done. I was sitting there. By the time I got out of that courtesy car at Concord, I was calm and relaxed and my days were done. You know, I got on the first, playing with Wayne Smith. I birdied one. Nice and calm, had a bit of a giggle. Birdied two. Birdie three. Oh. I knew I had to finish basically in the top 10 to make $30,000 and go from where I was to getting my card in the top 60. So I birdied three in a row. Wayne Smith knew what was going on and he came up to me on the fourth tee and just said, how are the pies going to go this year? I'm calling good supporter. Ah, okay. Right? And he calmed me down. Took your mind off it. And I went down, hit another shot in. I hit this one on the six foot. He goes, mate. We just start talking about West Coast. <laughs> I roll the six footer in, so I birdie the first four holes in a row. The next hole's another one, and he he just calmed me down. I end up birding the first five holes, Impressive. and Wayne Smith was in my ear for the rest of the round about anything but golf. Love it. Yeah, I ended up shooting sixty six. I got tied, finished tied for tenth. Oh. I made thirty thousand dollars, and I finished fifty ninth on the order of merit. <laughs> oh. And I will never, yeah. ever, ever yeah. forget. What Wayne Smith did for me that day. That's He's a awesome. mighty, mighty man. Yeah. And I, I, I looked at him today and just, you know, all those memories uh, came Got a lot of time for on. Wayne. He's, uh, he's a great bloke. That's an awesome story. Hey, have you heard this news about Metropolitan Golf Club? Uh, go on. Um, possibly. What are you talking about? Well, OCCM. Oh, right. Did some renovations. They did 12, 13, and the front half of 14, which is a par five. Yes, I remember. Yeah. Well, they also did a 19th hole, and it's in between the fifth hole and mm. the 6T. Par three up the hill? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They're being redone. Really? Yeah. They're being redone. A lot of the members weren't happy with okay. the work done by OCCM, which is a... You know, they've done a lot of good stuff. They have, yeah. But those holes are now, I don't know who's redoing them, mm -hmm. but they've redone the 19th, it's just the green was too severe is little, what I was, yeah, what I was, it was told. Yeah, good tee shot, good bunkering, greens, yeah, it was a tough awesome one Awesome to place hit. for a yeah. par three. Used Beautiful. to be, there used to be a par three there a million years ago. Yeah, yeah. 12 and 13, the members have hated right from the start. Yeah, it's a Completely tough. Completely hated them. Yeah, tough tee shot, tough second shot on 12, 13, and that's not a good green. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you've got some history at at Metropolitan <laughs> too, because where did you finish in the? Uh, that's that's the first time that I was, reckon we all stood up and yeah. said, "Who is this left-hander yeah. from Perth?" That's when the back page of the Herald Sun on Saturday said, "Nick Ohu." But Nick Ohu, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. A, and Alana was Alana Caddy. Alana Caddy. Yeah. Alana I Caddy carried my bag you. first round. And Where? then she flew the red eye over from Perth. And yeah. then she, uh, I shot 67, 66, and now I'm leading the Australian Open, playing with Lee Westwood on Saturday. Happy days. I didn't win, but I finished fifth, and that yeah. guaranteed me, you know, my card and starts, and that's what kicks out of my career. So I love Metropolitan. Yeah. And then I almost, I came close in the match play there as well. Where did you finish in the match play? I'm trying to, there was a little oh. Pierre Fulke was doing really, really well. Did yeah, he, did he win it? Uh, no, Steve Stricker Steve won Stricker, it. Steve Stricker, he got me. 
Quarter, in the quarterfinal, I was playing Steve Stricker. You got to the quarterfinals of a WGC. Yeah, I got to the quarterfinals in four of them, I think, in the match. And play. how old were you then? You were so young. Oh, that would have been early 2000s. I wasn't even meant to get in because I was around 100 in the world, ranked. Yeah. And then because a lot of the Americans didn't want to travel down, it was around Christmas time. So basically, I got into the tournament and then all of a sudden I'm playing Hal Sutton in the first round, who's the second you seed. You played Hal Sutton. He's, he's number five in the world. Unbelievable. I take him to 21 holes, get him. What's his final? What's his <laughs> Be the Right Club be today? The right, yeah, that, there yeah, you that's go. it. Yep. I ended up beating three Americans in a row uh, Hal, Dudley Hart, and uh, Tim Heron. But not that he remembers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Steve Stricker, we end up going extra holes, but we had to go out. Our first playoff hole, it was the 16th. Yeah. They sent us all the way out the far side of the course because yeah. other people were finishing. Short par four, beautiful hole. I hit my approach into four feet. Pretty much an easy birdie, I know. He's got a 30-footer down the hill yeah. to stay in it. Hits the hole, pops back in. If it misses, it's going off the green, right? I make mine, he gets me on the next. About Probably about six, seven years ago, I was over on you know playing PGA Tour or whatever it was, and I said to Steve, because he won the tournament, by mm. the way, and I said, mate, saw him in the, in the uh, players and said, do you remember that part at Metropolitan? And he looked at me, he smiled, and he says, do I? <laughs> <laughs> Tweets to the editor. What have you got over there? You can go first. Okay. I've got one here, and the reason I'm reading it, because I know this guy. I played golf with him the other day, oh, and he okay. asked me a question. He right. said, I, I want you to, you know, I'm going to tweet something. I said, okay. Now, send it in, and I'll have a look at it at the time. I've only just seen it. And he goes, dear Nick and Mark. So this is from Jonathan Rosham, by the way. Dear Nick and Mark, I have a few questions for you. Who are the top three golfers, including amateurs, with the worst etiquette and explain the worst performance you've seen on a golf course? Finally, have either of you two ever <laughs> been pulled up? <laughs> 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 Who are you? Have you ever, you know, played with anyone or yeah, uh, pro uh, and amateur or the worst, you go? The worst human being I've ever played for, played played oh. with, is Colin Montgomery. He, he okay. treated me so badly. I played with him in the Australian Open at the Lakes. Yep. He treated me so badly. Mm. I, t- I, still, I still get angry. He didn't shake my hand after the round. I, uh, I still can't believe it. Yeah, that's poor. And anyone who asks, I say, Colin Montgomery's the worst ever person I've ever mm. played with in my whole life. I never I never played with Monty, actually. So uh, in the locker room and all that, he was great. On yeah. the golf course, I don't know what he was like, but I know he could hear a butterfly landing, you know, 100 yards away. So. I was a 22-year-old. Wow. First time in anywhere near the bright lights of Australian golf. It was a big tournament, and he just treated me like a piece of garbage. Is this the one where someone knocked your ball off a tee? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. The first hole, I plugged a shot in the bunker. It was a six-club wind, and I hit a really bad three-wood. It started over the lake and cut back. It was the biggest healy thing you've ever seen. I hit a six-iron into that green. That's how windy it was. It plugged in the on, on the back thing. He hit the most beautiful driver and the tiny little six-iron that went six-foot high all the way to six-foot. Mm-hmm. It was ridiculous. I get in this bunker, and I hack it out, and now a downwind. I had no chance of staying. It's gone all the way off the green. As I'm walking you know, tail between my legs, just trying to get out of the way as I'm walking to get my ball. I hear him say loud enough to his caddy, Alistair. I remember Alistair's, I remember his name. <laughs> yeah, Al. Big Al, he's a good oh, caddy. Yeah. Good great, bloke. Great guy. He, uh, he said, I bet this kid shoots 85 today. Oh. Loud enough for me to hear. So now I'm really, I've got a 14-year-old caddy who's back there <laughs> raking the club. I've got the wrong club in my hands. Oh, I just, I just want to get out of the way. I get over the shot and I chipped it in. Bang, oh. bang four. He missed his six footer. We had the same uh, score. Uh, anyway, we get to the I second tee. It. We get to the second tee. My ball's up. I've walked through the tunnel. And he's, Alistair told me afterwards that it, he didn't know it, it was an accident that he kicked it off the tee. But oh, the ball okay. cannon into my leg when I'm talking to the cat, you know, caddy. Right. Anyway. Okay. What did he shoot? 85? Uh, I shot 72. He oh, shot nice. 73. Oh, Bang! Oh, yeah, well, good. Done, yeah, well done. Well yeah. done. All right. Well, I, I know my mate Jonathan. He wants so I'll, I'll tell you. There, there's a couple of guys I played with on the PGA Tour, and they had shockers on the golf course as far as etiquette goes. Really? Whether they're really in a bad space, personally or man, you know, whatever. But um, yeah, there was a guy Jeff Overton. I played with him in the Canadian. Sorry, the um, yeah, the Canadian Open. Yeah. And he carried on like you wouldn't believe. And the lady, the walking scorer, um, you know, had a young kid. Yeah. next to her the whole way around and he basically had to cover his ears. The language coming out of the mouth was terrible and we all swear on the golf yeah. course but this was bad and I had a real word to Jeff afterwards funnily enough. I said, mate, you need to pull your head in. Um, something's got to go on here. Unbelievable. And, I, and after that, the, weird, the hardest thing was O'Hearn in the locker room is next to Overton. 
So we were next door to each other, tournament <laughs> after tournament. He never spoke to me again. So uh, mm-hmm. it was one of those things. But hell of a player, played Ryder Cup and all that. And then the other guy that had happened to was uh, John Merrick. We're playing the Players' Championship. Similar thing, carried on like a pork chop. Yeah. The uh, the walking scorer said, if my son had language like that, I wouldn't let him play golf again. And I had a word to Jet John after. I said, mate, you need to apologize to these people. To his credit, he did. He came to me later. He said, look, I'm really sorry. And, oh, and he's gone on to have a really good career out there. And he's pulled his head in and it was yeah. great. So yeah. all, 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 all credit to him. Good so, on him. But more importantly, good on you. That, well, that's a very good thing you there, did. There are pros out there that they need to learn, okay, this is not the way to behave on the golf course. And I've seen some things. Sometimes I've let it go. And these ones I couldn't let go. It was mm. too bad. It was really bad. Now, we don't dodge questions so in this uh, particular segment. Uh, feedback to the editor. Well, what is it? Tweets to the editor. Changes every week. No, whatever, yeah. whatever it is. <laughs> um, this is from David W74. Listen today and enjoyed. Always liked watching Ormsby play so we did the bonus stuff Mm -hmm. on Wade Ormsby last week and good to hear him speak about his golf and the live situation a bit surprised he wasn't asked about the Saudi sponsorship of live so I imagine he wanted us to ask him uh, you happy taking Saudi (laughs) money when there are beheadings in the town square Mm. sort Mm. of question I didn't even think to ask it I I think it's just been done to death I think so as well yeah so maybe well and, and again I think everyone's kind of past that all now which is in a way, a sad way to think about it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's a tough one. And to be honest, I forgot. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. I forgot. Anyway. And, and and by the way, I reckon there are still people who watch the Olympics in China. I bet that the whole stack of people watched the World Cup in mm. Qatar yep. and didn't blink an eye. Mm. And it's funny, you know, no one ever – and I'm not saying this bad, Dave, or anything. I'm not having a crack at you or anything, but – you know, there's been a lot of uh, women tournaments in the same area sponsored by the same people and not one thing's ever been said about the women. So I think it's, you know, it doesn't seem fair to me that a bunch of male golfers are the ones carrying the can in this situation. Mm. Yep, it's a heavy anyway, one. That's just my thoughts. All right, perfect. Thanks for all your feedback, everyone. Love it. It's and good. we'll continue to answer all the questions now coming up after the turn, Marco. We've got a top five. Yep. Y- your top five. Oh, mine, yes. Your top five. We're also going to have a look at all the tournaments that have been played. Yep. Stacks happen. Brendan Jones. Talk want to golf, talk, yeah. Yeah, got to talk about that as well. Uh, and also, your masterclass. Yes. So we've got a bit to get through. See you on the 10th tee. From the Australian Golf Centre, this is Talk Birdie to Me with Nick O'Hearn and Mark Allen. Hey, your uh, complexion's looking nice. How's that, <laughs> how's that juice diet going? Oh, it was tough. Five day <laughs> juice cleanse. It's... How much weight did you lose? Oh, n- not it was. It was like an active one. So I actually had a protein bar each day. So it wasn't a full on juice cleanse. But well, I you had one protein bar and juice, and that's it every day. Every day for yeah. five days. Five days. And what do you reckon it does? Well, it reboots the system, you know, it just sort of flushes everything out and all that. And then, uh, uh, but the funny thing is, it sounds like shit. To first, me. <laughs> <laughs> first day is easy because, you know, you just don't eat for a day. Yeah. That's fine. Second day was tough. That's yeah. when the brain fog starts to hit. Third day, I started feeling good. Fourth day, the brain fog hit again. <laughs> and fifth day, I was like, okay, get me out of here. But at, funnily enough, uh, at the end, I, I wasn't hungry. Really bizarre. That's amazing. So, yeah. is, is rebooting the system a euphemism for going to the toilet a lot? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, a lot of things go through you and yeah. uh, it flushes its out. Yeah, right? And yeah, then you yeah. start again and wow. then come that first, first meal on day six and you're a happy camper. And so, so. You got, have you got energy? Do you feel like you've got more energy now? Or? Yeah, I just feel a little lighter. And, a, <laughs> and, a little <laughs> 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 and I've got a bit of a spring in my step, yeah, so okay. all good. Last week you promised us the top five PGA Tour stops Golf courses yes. that your average Joe can go and play. Yeah. You can play basically most of them. Um, but the yeah. best ones. Well, the, yeah. yeah, the best ones. Well, and that's the funny thing on the PGA Tour. Are they playing the best courses in the United States? No. no. no so no, it's a hard one to rate. But this is here's my top five. And in fifth place, I'm going to give a 5A and a 5B because it's oh, a bit yeah. of a toss-up between these two. Yeah. Uh, I always enjoyed Quail Hollow and Charlotte. It had a bit of Augusta sort of feel it to it with so the rolling the hills, TV. pure greens. The Aussies always do well there, I find. Well, I, you know, yeah. I played quite well there a couple of times. But, uh, yeah, it has that uh, large greens, almost Australian-type feel around the Have greens. Got, I quite like that one. We've got a major coming. I think I think uh, the Quail Hollow's got a major in their future. Could be. Yeah, yeah they had I the PGA so. there before. 
had the President's Cup as well. Yep. Yep. Uh, so that was 5B and then 5A is Colonial. I always liked that place. Just a fun golf course. You walk into the locker room there. So you played well there and this I made the top well. five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, all of these I've played well at. I'm not going to name it once. I'm not going to go to Tory Pies because I hated that place. So it's a slog, you know. <laughs> so anyway, that, and but if you do go there, you got to walk. They've got a little um, uh, like a presentation room of Ben Hogan because yeah, that's where he used to go there. play and practice. It's magic. And get your photo magic. next to the Ben Hogan statue yeah. as well. Oh, it's brilliant. Now, number four, again, is another favourite. Always played well there. Oh, what a surprise. Hilton Head, uh, Harbour Town. Shortest course on the oh, PGA Tour. Oh, I tell you, you got to work the ball. you got to shape it. I could hit driver everywhere. Everyone else has hit nines off the tee. I, I think I led the led the long driving distance that week. It was the only time on tour. It was fantastic. Have they so. got one of the big $20 million tournaments there this year? Yes. Is one of the elevated tournaments? It's one tournaments? of the designated ones. Yeah, yes. okay. And you get a horrible tartan jacket for uh, for winning it. So right. anyway. But hey, it'd be fun. And then they do the big cannon off the first. You know, hey, that tour. reminds me, when you... F- Get through the last mm. three. I've got to ask you about the new tour setup and yes. how that's going to Ooh. go. Yeah, the new uh, yeah, we got to, anyway, yeah, we will. Okay, okay. Number three, uh, love Jack's place, Murfield Village. Oh, it looked and, unbelievable. Yeah. And walking off the seventy-second hole, and you get to shake Jack's hand. Oh, I tell Do you yeah. what, he's the greatest of all time. He's brilliant. He talks like that. that. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a high voice, but <laughs> but the course you really had very stra- strategic, and it's manicured to perfection. It looks, I mean, it's what sort of fairways are they? They almost uh, look like bent grass fairways yeah, to me. I mean, they're some sort of a cooch. I, I'm guessing or a bent or rye or whatever the you know I'm not a big grass guy so I don't know but a lot amazing. of creeks a lot of hazards and gee it's a fun place to play yeah, okay. so uh, number two mm, TPC Sawgrass it's got to be done you know yep. that that back nine is something else and you get on 17 and first time I went there you know practice round 17 no problem yeah. green. it's just a wedge yeah. 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 first day of the tournament they're like who shrunk this green <laughs> 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 that looks really small but I never hit in the water so I love sawgrass yeah. and uh, it was a lot of fun and I got number the, one I got, okay. play, I got I got I got the play sawgrass once mm-hmm. and it's the it's the if for people in Australia it's the best Queensland course I've ever played yeah <laughs> there you go That's yeah, good, it, yeah it's, they, it's awesome yeah I it, loved it it used to it wasn't Bermuda originally though, and then they had yeah. to change it because of the heat and yeah I think because of the March start I I think has actually gone back to their overseeding those greens this year. And number one, just because I love going there and I, a friend of mine had a house on site and I used to stay on the 13th <laughs> hole, Pebble Beach, oh, the AT&T. Wow. You got to it's stay on the, the 13th hole at Pebble Beach. Yeah, he had a house on the right-hand side, par Who? four. Uh, Michael Fitzpatrick was his name, good friend of mine. I played with him in the Dunhill Lynx Championship over in Europe when I played uh, yeah. you know, the Pro-Am format I over there. I thought you were going to say Clint Eastwood there for a second. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, had, had dinner with Clint at one point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you yeah, know, they had the player it. parties and you, you go and you meet and greet. And, oh, there's Clint. And, you what know, was Clint so, like? He was great. I took a picture. I didn't have much. You know, a bit of a brief chat, but uh, oh, there's all, so you know, all the pros want to get to those sorts of guys and all the – all the celebrities, I want to talk to the pros. So it's a, it's it's a win-win. But Pebble, you got to go. It's fantastic. Yeah. So, Beautiful. Anyway. All right. Very good. I love the top five. Now, you're the only one in this room who's mm. played the PGA Tour. And we've seen just the new format was outlined last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, more elevated tournaments designated, without cuts. I think, I think they're calling them designated now. Designated right now, tournaments. No cuts. Mm. Um, the way it was presented to me was it's the best players in the world playing with the hottest players mm-hmm. in the world. Yes. What do you make of it? Do you like? Do you like the sound of it? Oh, the no cuts thing. Obviously, you know, the, a lot of the live golf side of things will be saying, "Oh, well, they're just copying us." Yeah. But no, they're not. You know, they're, they're they're doing a slightly different version. Well, maybe in a way they are. But well, the World Golf Championship events, yeah, never had they cuts. always had no cut yeah. events. Now, the, what they're going to do is have eight designated no cut events. So, top there'll be seventy to eighty players, is yep. what they're saying. Uh, that is made up of the top 50 from the previous year's money list and then there's other ways to get in. Now, they're holding four sponsor exemptions for these events too. Mm. So if you're one of those four sponsors, they're going to have you know criteria, yeah. but you thank your lucky stars for getting in these things. So then they'll have uh, those eight designated. They'll have the three FedEx Cup playoffs yep. and then they've got the majors and the sawgrass. They're yep. the big designated yep. events. So you add all of them up, there's 16 designated yep. events. Uh, I guess 11 is no cuts because yeah. the three FedEx cut. Do, they, do these yeah. count as the international series of events that they were floated uh, a couple of years ago? Like, so after the next year, at the, after the FedEx Cup and after, after mm-hmm. the Ryder Cup or the President's Cup, whichever one it is, mm-hmm. They're going to have an international series of events that only the top 70 players who made the, predic- the FedEx Cup were going to play. So is that still in play? We'll have to find out. Well, Maybe find that's out. what this is. I'll have to find um, out for next week. It, yeah. it could well be exactly yeah. that. I mean, last year we all knew this was coming, uh, yeah. but they just announced it. And we go, so what? What? No cut? No, everyone knew it was coming. Yeah. Now, am I a fan of the no cut event? No, I like a cut. Yeah. I think it, 
it really makes you uh, grind as a golfer. You know, you're talking about before some of your career moments where when you had to make the cut and you, you just yeah. achieve something, you grind, and it makes careers in that way. Now, if you miss the cut, well, you hate it, obviously, and if you're in the top 70, you say, no, nah, no cut for me. It's yeah. fantastic. But, but it's another dimension. It, it is, yeah. So I, I, I would like to see these, and I'm sure they're going to tweak them in the future with these no-cut events. I think maybe they might cut to 50 on the weekend or something like that. Yeah. That would be a really good thing because the other thing I like about it, and they've run all these different models to do with these designated events because they're – you're going to have almost the top 50 and then the rest, right? Yeah. All this. So people are saying it's going to be two different tours. Well, no, it won't be. They'll they'll still be able to play. There are ways for them to get in, which is great. Yeah. But the churn of the top 50 players for the next year, they're saying is going to be about 18 players. Mm. So if you're in that top 50, next year, 18 of those guys are going to drop out. 18 will come in. So that's quite a big churn. If yeah. there was only going to be four or five players, I'd, be, I'd really be worried about that. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I think it's great, to tell you the truth, because – with live players going, it has thinned out the fields on the PGA Tour, and I want to see the best that are left more yeah. often. Yeah, for sure. I think it's very important. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, it is. But in saying that, you know, last week at the Honda, mm. in the end, there was that many storylines going well, around at the Honda that was that, that it didn't that matter. Gone. It didn't seem to matter. No. So no. it was it, incredible. It was great. Yep. Uh, any results that uh, oh, we should have yes. been keeping our eyes on? Well, let, let's start locally. Um, you know, we had the New Zealand Open on, obviously. PJ. Uh, Brendan Jones, what a what a result! Made the cut on the number four under cut. By the way, that yeah. was low. Yeah, I mean Millbrook's a you know a good golf course, thirty six holes there now. Made the cut on the number and then shot. What did he shoot? Nine under sixty two. Nine under on, on Saturday, the third day, jumped up into the, the second last group mm-hmm. or something like that, or the third last group, something yeah. crazy. And what happened? It was a, the leader, final round leader. Tell you you saw this on Twitter. Uh, Shea Wolves Cobb. Have you seen anything like that before? No, I've never seen anyone hit two golf balls at <laughs> once when they didn't mean to. Unknowingly, right? Unknowingly, yeah. And the, the, his ball that he saw in the rough ended up on the green. That was his, right? That was his. Okay. And the ball that he didn't see, which was right next to his ball, just popped up and went so, to what, kind of out to the it, right. Was it buried? I didn't see it, but you, you told me about it. It must have been buried. Yeah, that's I mean, crazy. it must have been. It must have been buried or just. Yeah. I don't know. It must have been where the divot was about to be taken mm. or something, but it, but it just popped out. No penalty. No. And I think no, well because he hit his own ball. He hit his own yeah. ball. That's right. But I think in the old days, well, it might have been a penalty. Oh, it, that'd be hard balls. done by. I know. That'd but be the, hard done In the by. old days, mate, the rules of golf were yeah, a disgrace. I'm glad they've been true. cleaned up. They're, they're much, much better. Anything else? But uh, great to see BJ win. He leaps up to number two on the Australasian Order of Merit, that. by the way. Hey, now, behind he, Michaluzzi. Does he have to play a couple He's of events? He's got to play two more, which he will, obviously. So you've got to play four for it to count. He's played two. So here's my question. He's played in Japan his whole life. I think he's won nine or something Mm -hmm. crazy. He's won a lot of events. Let's say it's ten. He's won ten events in Japan. He's 48 years old. If he gets a card to the DP World Tour, Mm. will he use it? Um, that you have to ask BJ. Maybe we need to find out. I think he will. That might be. Yeah, absolutely. I think. Although I, I know he loves playing in Japan because similar time yeah. zones. He loves just going back and forth. I assume he's still fully exempt up there, and uh, maybe and he's just, made a hell of a career. Maybe you're just playing the tournaments now, backyard. You know, just yeah. in the Emirates and stuff yeah, like well, that. I mean, until you turn fifty, and then maybe you play some champions. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. So, anyway, so well, well done, so, BJ. Great that stuff. was great. Uh, Did you catch the Athena? I I was playing golf the last yep. couple of days, so I missed it. You were you were doing the coverage, tell yeah, me. Yeah, f- a fantastic commercial for women to start golf. Mm. Absolutely brilliant. Love um, it. And Grace uh, Lennon won, which was awesome. Grace Lennon won. Um, she she was in the same conversation when she was an amateur as Minji Lee and Sue O. I I heard, She was yeah. playing in Australian teams with those yeah. two. Um, she was an she didn't like tra- She didn't like travelling, didn't mm. play well as a professional, That's started tough. teaching, and now she's won 30000 bucks. Oh. Whether that gets her going. $30,000 is a lot of money, but it doesn't last that long in Europe. So no. we'll see what she does. But uh, as far as the format, great. As far as the uh, four-hole stroke match player on the weekend, very good. But the girls that they picked to play in the Athena – Sold the event. They were, they were yeah. good fun girls. Yeah. And did you see the final round of the uh, PGA Tour event at Bay Hill, by the way? Kurt Kitayama. Uh, I, I saw bits and pieces. I was, <laughs> I was watching it on my iPhone as I was playing yeah. Royal Melbourne. And uh, he made a triple bogey. He hit one out of bounds on uh, nine, made a triple. And I'm thinking he's done. Like he had a one or a two shot lead at this stage. Yeah. And he's got Spieth, McElroy, yeah. uh, Scheffler. All the big names, yeah. but Ram, Ram had a shocker yeah. and he might have finished 15th or 20th. He yeah. had a terrible you know, week, blah, blah, blah. But 
And I thought, okay, these guys are going to take over. But he hung tough and the other guys faltered. Spieth had it. Yeah. And he bogeyed three of the last four or five holes. He missed all these short putts. Spieth put on a masterclass around the green. Not that that's what the masterclass yeah. is going to be on because <laughs> he didn't win. Because <laughs> he didn't win. But yeah. uh, that was phenomenal. But Bay Hill... What's that, what's that? What's that? Okay. What's it like? It Very looks, overrated golf course. I mean, it looks great on TV. Nice finishing holes, but I wouldn't go there to play it. It looks amazing on TV. It does. It's yeah. Arnie's course. I know. I Don't live, bother. I live five minutes from there, and uh, it's just a hard golf course. It's okay. not a lot of fun to play. And just that's, banging your head the against a brick wall. Pretty, and if they grow the rough up like they do, if put it this way, if the winning score for a PGA Tour event is nine under, how hard do you think the golf course is? I mean, yeah. it is brutal. It is brutal. So, um, but hey, another top ten for Jason Day. Yeah, yeah he's, he's just, he's coming. He's just he's sneaking just, along. He's in his way he, up there. It's good yeah. fun to watch. Yeah, no, that's great. Very, very good. That's great news too. Hey, one more thing just on Kurt Kitayama, who did win the tournament by a stroke. Is it his first win? On the PGA Tour, yeah. yeah. Yep. Do you know what his nickname was? Kurt Kitayama. No. <laughs> they used to call him The Project because in college – they said this guy wasn't any good. I mean, he was not any good. He, he went to UNLV and everyone on the college team, they sort of took him under his wing, thought, yeah. let's help this guy out. You know, he's yeah. not very good. Here's we'll, the project. We'll get him going. And <laughs> he's the project. <laughs> he ended up grinding it out on the mini tours. He went to the DP World Tour, won twice over there, and he's had three runner-ups in the last year or so on the PGA Tour. Like, he lost by a shot to McElroy, and now he just beat McElroy by yeah, a we're shot. We're going to see him at Augusta. How wow. awesome. So good. That is sensational. Mm. Before we go to uh, your masterclass, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned then rules. Uh, it's my top five next week. Yeah. I'm going to do the top five worst rules in the history of golf. Ooh. Yeah, that's yep. going to be a fun one. No, I'll, I'll, I'll get that done. I'll get that done <laughs> have to next think week. about that long and hard. Time for the masterclass. I'm a Okay, yes, the masterclass. Well, if you did watch a lot of the golf over the weekend, you will notice most of the guys on tour and the girls, for some of them, are hitting their nice power fade. They're all 80%. Shape, shaping the ball left to right. 80% okay, of them. Off the tee. And the reason they do it is that the distance is no problem anymore because they've got Why? so much speed. Because once upon a time, cuts went much shorter yeah, than draws. much shorter. But now they've got – well, because the ball spins less now, obviously, and they've got the launch angles and the technology's dialed everything. And unfortunately for me, for me the ball still doesn't go that far. <laughs> However – I my natural shape is a slight fade with the driver, so yeah. I like the fade. The reason being, it's the easiest to control. Yeah. So what I'll show later in, I'm going to put a video up of this a little bit later, is how to hit that little gentle fade. But for the right handers, just aim it up the left side of the fairway, peel it off, and just work it back in the middle of, of of the golf course. And for most of the tour pros you'll see out there, they will do that. But a lot of them can hit the draws when they want to. But it is a dangerous shot, and if you watched the uh, Bay Hill event, old uh, Kitayama snap hooked one, and he was trying to hit the draw yeah. on nine, and he hit it out of bounds. So dangerous <laughs> shot. <laughs> Can I ask the question yeah. that all punters are trying to work out right mm. now? Why is the fade easier to control with the driver mm -hmm. than a draw? So basically, what you're doing is you're keeping that club face, you know, a little bit more square to the target, a little longer. You're not releasing or flipping the over. hands. You're not rolling over. So the way you do it is you aim it up the left side. I'm going to talk in right-handed terms, even though I'm a, a left-hander. Uh, you just aim up the aim up the left side. So you're aiming left of your target. You want to open the face slightly. Okay, that this is one way to do yeah. it. So your your your, uh, your path and the face angle are going to be a little bit controversial. So you're going to swing along the line of your feet, and you're going to hold that face open. You're not going to release the Don't hands as roll much. The face. But for a lot of people out there, the fade is the natural shot, mm. and a lot of them are trying to hit Draws. draw. <laughs> Don't just play your natural shot. <laughs> aim it up the left side. If you know you hit a 15 yard cut, and it's going to happen every time, hit the 15 <laughs> yard cut. It may not go as far as you like. It is worthwhile trying to figure out how to hit the draw, but I tell you what, stick to that fade because it's going to keep you in play that much longer. And after that, work on your short game. That's yeah. where you're going to save the most shots. No, you're smart. Oh, okay. you play with everyone and they hit this little fade, and you go, "Great shot!" And they go, oh, "I didn't draw. I don't like it." It's like, <laughs> "Mate, it's a great shot. What are you worried uh, about?" I know. Yeah, it's a um, crazy game. Good on you, buddy. I'll see you next week. Okay, beautiful. Thanks, mate. That's been Nick O'Hearn and Mark Allen's brand new podcast, Talk Birdie to Me, live from the Australian Golf Centre, home of the PGA of Australia and Golf Australia. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. And send a message through if you've got any feedback on the show, good, bad or indifferent. And if you share the podcast with just one friend, you know what, that'll make a massive difference and we'd appreciate it. Talk Birdie to Me's executive producer is Dan Bradley at Kaizen Media. Sound design, Daryl Misson at loudzebra.com. Hey, uh, you know the juice stuff. 
you, mm. you didn't eat a meal for five days. Yeah. What, what did you go for? Well, what, what was your meal? Well, well, the next meal is breakfast, you see. It's the next morning. Oh, I know, it's boring. boring. I know. And the other thing is when you do that, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to throw some bad stuff in the system so what, yeah. straight away. Well, yeah, I just had a bit of oatmeal and all yeah, that. You're oh, such well. a I'm good here, Salad for lunch, you know. I'm, I'm meant, what, scrambled eggs well, and bacon and a big sausage <laughs> or something. Well, I'm 